Hello, man cavers. Want to do a little video to do some explaining on the Enfield. Roll the credits. <laughs> Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. Right, several of you have been asking on updates of this Enfield twin diesel. I have weighed up the problem. Problem we were having, if you remember from last videos, I was cranking and cranking and cranking this thing and as soon as I hit compression boom it would stop dead it would not go over compression I think if it went over compression it would start because we've got a good injector spray pattern we've got fuel she's yeah a lot of compression right let me show you what I have found out now we're going to come around this side and this is something I couldn't see because from from around the other side of the engine, uh, let me decompress this. Uh, come on, girl. There we go. Right. See, we've got this engine decompressed. And when I turn it, it its compression stops. Right. The problem is, if I zoom in, now then. We know this one's freewheeling because that's on a centrifugal clutch. Problem is, <clears throat> this engine is now, let me turn it. Oh, right, that engine's now on compression. And I can't turn it without decompressing. You watch. You watch. See that flywheel? We're pulling the flywheel and we're not getting any compression on the engine. This is where our problem is. Yes, when I turn the engine, it is turning the flywheel. But if I zoom in, and I'm hoping you can see this, Look at the play. Can you actually see that? All right, look at the play on that flywheel. I don't whether you can see that. All right, just look at the play. Ah, look how much that flywheel will push in. See? This flywheel is loose. So what's happening is, when I'm winding this thing over, yes, the flywheel's turning with the engine, but as soon as I hit compression, the engine stop, yet the flywheel continue to turn. Because the flywheel, look at that. That flywheel is loose on the engine. Why is that? Well, I've done some research and there's an anti-vibration dampener. Bit like a cushion drive on the back of a motorbike, I'm assuming. Which is between the engine and the crank. To basically take the vibration out of your load, they put a big rubber dampening block on there. I know the old Dutes V8s used to have a similar thing when I used to do hydraulic pumps on Dutes V8 beat harvesters and that, they used to have a cushion drive. And this cushion drive is totally, totally shagged. Which is why I can turn this flywheel, and as soon as the engine hits compression, the flywheel just turn, it just keeps turning on them knackered rubbers. So, do you see what I mean? There's no way you should be able to turn it with the number of compression this has got. And that ain't decompressed, that is, you know. If I try and turn it on the handle, 
Oh, she's on compression. Oh, see, I can't even turn that on the handle. Yeah, I'll get on the flywheel. Nothing there. See what I mean? That's where our problem is. Because what you should do is this should spin, 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 spin. And the momentum of this flywheel should knock the engine over compression. But it isn't because this flywheel is loose. Can you see that? I'm hoping you can see the amount of ply actually in this flywheel. Now you can't really see it. But I am trying to show you where our problem is. But yeah, that flywheel is loose. So in a way, look at that one. All that ply in that flywheel. So I need to locate, if I can find one, a cushion drive for a flywheel for an Enfield twin. Are they available? Can you still get them? Have no clue. But that is why I think she's not starting. Because as soon as that hits compression, the engine stopped dead, yet the flywheel keeps turning. Which it shouldn't do. The flywheel, the momentum should assist it. So you're basically trying to run an engine with no flywheel, which won't work. In a way, I'm kind of glad this didn't start, because that flywheel being loose like that, I wouldn't fancy being near it with a flywheel that loose with the engine running. So we kind of dodged a bullet by it not starting, but on the other hand, it's a bit annoying. So, for those of you that are saying you'd love to see the Enfield again, my investigations have brought me to that, so that's our problem with it. So, yeah, we need a cushion drive for the flywheel. I will try my hardest to locate one, but getting bits for these isn't easy. And whether I'll ever get one, I don't know. Because you can't buy a new one, where would you even look? I think what I ought to do is take the flywheel right off at some point and see if I can, you know, see what's going on in there and yeah we'll give it a go from there but this is the update on the Enfield because I know some of you guys were like oh we'd love to see the Enfield again well here she is still but as you can see that is our problem with it it is yeah got a knackered cushion drive on the flywheel and that's why as soon as that hit compression the engine stops because the engine stops yet the flywheel keep turning that's our problem. Right, that's going to be it for this video, just a very quick video. The next thing we're going to be doing is the gen set, the generator. Walk with me for a minute, I've had an idea, I'll just go through this with you. Our nice list of start-o-matic set. Cool, we had some rain about here, the whole field's getting muddy. Our list of start-o-matic set, I'm going to put it on this trailer now this whole pump that engine this pump the pump itself i think is good that engine is knackered um that's a twin cylinder peta petrol on there and it really it ain't knackered it's it turns over and it, it does run but it's low on compression so i think it needs a rebuild either way all this pump and engine is coming off which is going to leave me with a lovely very heavy duty little trailer which a few years ago i actually put road going wheels on so i've actually got suspension units and wheels on there and a proper tow bar to go behind a car it used to have an eye what went behind a tractor anyhow all this is coming off and that startomatic gen set is going to be bolted on there so yeah 
I am going to take all this off this trailer. If you want me to video me stripping this trailer off, getting all this crap off this trailer, this pump and this engine, if you want me to video that and post it up, I will. Drop it in the comments below if you'd like to see that. If not, I'll just get all this took off and not bother recording it. But that's going to be our next step. Because really, um, the engine, the Lister diesel... I pretty much can't do anything like that until that's mounted. Um, so I think it's pretty much going to run. So I think the first order of business really is actually get that on this trailer. Get the generator bolted back up to it. And then we can start taking covers off and going through it and doing some wiring and getting it going. But yeah, so this is going to be the first order of business is take this stuff off. That plate, what that big petter has bolted to. I think that's about the right size to hold that lister if we just re-drill the holes but I think this little trailer I mean that's a heavy duty little trailer it ain't gonna break so I think that trailer is going to be what has that lister on it so yeah we'll see so that's it so, oh, what's the date today I think that's Thursday today so that's New Year's Day day out tomorrow so I'm going to go, and yes, I hope you enjoy this video. Excuse me for not addressing the camera, but it's a bit muddy. So yes, I'm going to go, and just want to give you an update for you Enfield lovers about what's happening with this thing. So, there we go. Right, I'm going to go. Happy New Year to you guys. Hope you had a fantastically festive season and if we can get a cush drive for this that would be fantastic i would like to get this old girl running so yeah we'll have to see if we can get a rubber cush drive for that dodgy flywheel right i'm off see you next time bye bye for now ha <laughs> ha